Hey, <laughs> welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Today was fun. You guys know that I do this intro after the show's already been uh, filmed and done. So I am full of my original passion and single malts. I am such a fan of peated whiskey and today was no exception. So uh, today we sit down with Andrew Andrew Rayburn and Averin Edwards from Turlado and Distel. They do Deanston, Bunahabin, Edradour, and uh, we do only limited expressions today. So all the new stuff that came out around Christmas time, all the wine finishes, all the the special editions, all at like crazy proof ranges of fifty five percent, fifty eight percent. Um, this is like where I got my start was like peated single malts um, and non-peated single malts. And then I moved over to bourbon, but uh, this episode was awesome. So just to hit all the key points, because I know you guys don't like um, super long intros, I'll tell you uh, today's episode is still sponsored by our, our our love of McAllen and Highland Park, as well as EP Carrillo Cigars and Stogies here in Houston. So if you are a fan of cigars and peated or non-peated single malts, McAllen, Highland Park, uh, E.P. Carrillo Cigars, and of course you can get all of those sticks at uh, Stogie's here in Houston. So I think we pretty much covered all the highlights. Uh, Houston Whiskey Social is on sale now. I want to push it as hard as possible before the um, the rodeo comes to town. So definitely if you've never been to the state's largest whiskey event, I highly encourage you to go to my event because I am clearly biased um, and... and uh, full of myself, but I, I love the event. I'm, I'm passionate about what we do. And the Houston Whiskey Social is, it's my baby. I'm very proud of it. So HoustonWhiskeySocial.com. You can get those tickets on Eventbrite, Facebook. Uh, definitely check out all of our show sponsors. And today, this is a non-sponsored show in regards to these guys. They're not sponsoring the show. They didn't give me a dime Deanston, Bunahabin, and Lechegg are classic malts. They've been around a long time. Where, where uh, Bunahabin has been the core part of so many different blends, and they've really branched out to their own stuff. And I'm I'm a fan. So definitely enjoy this episode with Andrew Rayburn. He's been in the U.S. for the past six months from Scotland, uh, and Avon Edwards. This guy, just a little peek behind the curtain. He's the one that kind of let me know that Devil's River was seeking cease and desist for certain accusations, uh, justified accusations. Oh, no, not justified accusations. We were wrong about a lot of the accusations. And we did get some feedback about that episode. I will tell you that I've talked to Mike a few times before the show, during the show, and a few times after the show. And I do believe him. Um, and the stuff that he asked me not to, to talk about after the show, he gave me some answers to some follow-ups. Uh, we're just stuff that he was afraid we're going to, you know, um, the people who won't let this go and wouldn't give them a break or be fair to that episode, he just didn't want to give them any more reason to be jerks about things. Uh, I definitely believe him. It is grain of glass, Texas whiskey. They're still in violation of TTB, but Mike, dude, it takes some can, can I speak frankly? Just us. This doesn't have to be on the air. No one has to hear this. But the balls it takes for a brand to circumvent any kind of marketing advice or lawyer advice and come on the show in which thousands of people do watch the show, which is crazy to me because why? But uh, to come on the show and just directly answer pretty much everything, he, he deserves much more respect than he was given. I'll tell you, I'll say that. That's my opinion. Um, I, I lost my point. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you for supporting my brands. Thank you for supporting the show. And without further ado, Andrew Rayburn and Averin Edwards from Turlado and Distel, Punahabin, Deanston, and Lechegg whiskeys. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Chris, for having yeah. us. And I'm glad to kind of sit down with no, you. Definitely. We've been talking for a while. Yeah. You were one of the, the early pioneers who, who warned me, like, hey, man, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> that, right? That whole Devil's River thing is blowing up. Well, because when it was coming up, I was in I was in Kansas City, and I was, you know, reading the post, and I was like, man, you guys just be careful, you know? Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you just don't want somebody to get hit with a lawsuit that sure. first off can't afford it. And then it's like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm right is, there. I couldn't just, afford yeah, it. <laughs> it's just like, hey, this is just what I heard. I'm just talking, you know, freely. But Well, let me say yeah. something about that. I think it's amazing uh, that there are people within the industry that are willing to give people a heads up and say, hey, watch yeah. out. Because yeah. what happens too often, especially in this, you know, the industry has been very closed for a long time. Everything's walking on eggshells. I went to barrel craft spirits to go pick out some barrels in December in, in Louisville. And I wore a Glenfiddich sweater for, <laughs> for a photo opportunity. And that got around. And, and I had some brands reach out to me and like, you see what he's wearing? He's wearing a Glenfiddich sweater yeah. at a different brand. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Right, like, yeah. Get over yourself. <laughs> we, we, no one, even the brand ambassadors themselves, they don't all drink just their products yeah. they drink everything right so it's i don't know what you're talking about on that one. yeah uh, <laughs> i just drink nothing but you know what i sell so this smells <laughs> fantastic by the no way. it's great man actually it's um at 56.4 so it's gonna be it, pretty much anytime you see an lto from uh distel it's basically gonna be a you know barrel proof, so, so yeah. i do try to be mindful of those who have no idea of, of abbreviations but okay uh, Limited Sorry. time offering. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 Sorry. A yeah. limited product. Gotcha. Um, the, the, and Distel is the, uh, they manage these brands. So Lecheg, Tobermory, Bunahaben, Deanston, all, uh, longtime Scotch brands. And, and, I, and I'm going to give you a shout out here because I'm looking at the proofs on these things <laughs> and I just realized, uh, we're in trouble. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so <laughs> for, yeah, you know, Scotch is. <laughs> Don't get nervous. <laughs> so, well, trust me, I'm not. Scotch has got this long history yeah. of um, not sedentary, but but it's you know it's an older brand. The image in people's minds evokes an an, uh, uh, an old white guy or an old you know rich person yeah. sitting in the thing. Uh, but bourbon has has been you know obviously on this upswing, and you're looking at all these wine finished. High proof scotches, I think, are going to be very approachable to bourbon drinkers, and just the notes on this alone is, mm. is screaming fantastic. So one that was already out, it was uh, came out from Deanston back in the spring. It was a Bordeaux cast, and um, it actually does really well. You might still be able to find a few balls laying around, um, really tasty. Water. Uh, Oh no, I'm good. I like to drink it straight first. There you go. It ch- I find it changes a bit with the uh, the water. Sure. Think, so I will tell you that the. Uh, Initially, it drinks under proof. Yeah. But then on the back end, you, you definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely just, get it. So you just got, I call that my Red Bull. And so, actually, Andrew is from Deanston. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's uh, the Mashman. Well, he's not really a Mashman right now, yeah. or at least been for <laughs> six months, but that's where um, he did. So, you know, we created this um, brand ambassador um, program, and this is the first time we've actually done it. So, you know, with Distel and Terralotto, it's actually a joint venture that we did roughly about three years ago. And so um, with that, we had Terrell Auto Brands, then we had the Distel Brands. So sure. with the Distel Brands, it brought, I would say, some really well-named, you know, world-sized brands. Sure. So with the Bunas, the Deansons, um, and so on. We even have Black Bottle. That's part of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Scottish like, Leader. That's also, you know, part of this portfolio. Um, but, you know, we just really want to focus on the single malts and just let – you know like hey these are you know the limited time offerings that we do and they've gotten really good you know bunahav and you'll see those just about you know one or two a year you know we did have a px that it hit the shelf and it was oh yeah Uh, village liquor yeah i I couldn't even get a bottle i was so mad i was like i I hit up scott and i was like hey man can i get can you find me a bottle and he's like yeah they're all out and i was like dude that lasted like two weeks so so the great thing about it is so bunahav and uh and correct me if i'm wrong but traditionally, Bunahabin was a large, it was like Kregelike. It was like the, the, uh, it was blended in a lot, it was part of a lot of blends, a mm-hmm. lot of core. And Bunahabin, when people think of, or at least when blenders would, would produce a peated blend, mm-hmm. uh, the, that core product was Bunahabin for the most part. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and now it's, it's doing its own thing. It's, it's branding itself in this incredible way. And, 
Uh, it kind of reminds me of Edra Dower that that does. <laughs> yeah, that, he, he can tell you a good story about that. that yeah. Distillery. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well yeah, I used to work there, so I don't okay, know, so, so, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I'm all ears. Uh, but uh, yeah, Edra Dower did. Uh, I think it was called the House of Lords blend. And then uh, once Andrew Symington took over, I think 2005, he basically went all to single malts and discontinued blends. So yeah, and that they've kind of evolved into the more single malt market. Same with, uh, I guess, Deanston and also uh, Bunnahaven. They have they do, a lot of them of their spirit does go to blends, but uh, they do they are focusing a lot more on single malts, like limited edition as well as core range uh, varieties, basically. So, so, and you've actually you've been here since for like six months now, right? Uh, since the second of September, yeah. What's the just on a on a <laughs> national tour preaching the good word of, of single malts or? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, so basically, they wanted a, a workman as such from the distillery uh, to come over and promote the brands. Uh, so I'm based in Chicago, and I go to uh, different markets around America. Uh, That's a lot of time away from home. It is, yeah. Yeah, he tired? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. I heard uh, Avery took you to, to gun range recently. You got to you got to experience yeah. America at its finest. <laughs> the McDonald's uh, after? We, and we might have to cut out now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're good. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that was the first time I've uh, fired a gun and uh, saw them for sale, uh, really. And uh, it's, it's so, if, as Americans, we don't even think twice about it as being weird and uh you when you hear someone come over here and it's so foreign to them it's like uh it's it's such been such a core part of uh, our oh, our yeah. entire belief system is the second amendment right so um that's so that's crazy was it was it jarring i mean uh, I mean, you, you know, you've read or heard of these things it was just it was, it was just so unusual oh, go down to the shop to buy a you know, five hundred dollar handgun. You know, it's uh, we, you know, back home it's usually you know lollipops or uh, yeah, or yeah. chocolate in my case. So it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, very different to back home. Now. There's uh, I've told a few stories about my wife on this show, and uh, I want to say our our first official date alone, the first time we had met was with people. But it was either the first or second date alone. I took her to a gun range. That, there you go. And uh, <laughs> we saw one of those and, last night. And now we're married. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's yeah. uh yeah, it's it's such a fascinating part. Which gun range did you go to? Ah uh, man, what was it? It was I was down in Sugarland. We met one of my friends down there. So Johnny, he uh, took us out. He was a member down there. I, f- I forgot the name of Texas Guns or something like that. Sure, sure. Um, really nice place. But um, went in and. He brought his uh, ARs and then oh my nine gosh. millimeter. Yeah, yeah. So it was good to be able to shoot both, and then you know just just to hear it, you know, yeah. you're still like, whoa, what is yeah, that? Yeah, but yeah, It was good. You always to, forget yeah. how uh, jarring of an experience it is. It's been a while since I fired a gun. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, it's it's always uh, fun, but it's it can be a bit no, definitely abrasive. No, and that's the thing, you know, with him. Um, shoot, he's he's been here since September. So, and I used to do the same thing he did for Gordon McFell, and that's when I was just running, you know, sure. in and out of airplanes. I'm a big Gordon McFell fan, and, by so the way. Yeah. Always, I mean, great whiskey, so they do a great job. So, um, with, I was just like, you know, won't you enjoy some time? Because usually it's like, hey, you're up, and then you're going to an appointment, going to an appointment. Sure. Saying the same thing over and over again. The meetings have just not and, stopped. Man, and people don't realize that on this side of the table, like, we really enjoy what we do. But we can only tell the story so so many times. Sure. But it's like emotional and mentally draining on you. you yeah. Know, at the end of the night, you're just still like, okay, I need to wind down. And what do you do to wind down? Uh, <laughs> you, I, yeah, you drink. <laughs> you, yeah. you drink. And I had so, uh, <laughs> David Allardyce in, and we were talking about he had hit like I think in four weeks five different countries. And I, oh yeah, it <laughs> happened. I thought that's just uh, it's got to be a soul draining experience. And and when you tell me you've been here since September, I'm like. Oh yeah, that's got to be brutal, man. I mean, I, I love a good vacation, but six months here in uh, away from your own bed is just. Oof. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a, an apartment in uh, Chicago, so uh, it's kind of like home, as sure, a, sort of a temporary home as such. But uh, yeah, you you do miss certain things from uh, you know uh, from Scotland, so it's. Uh, but you know, it's been a great experience. I've enjoyed the tr- traveling different areas and you know working people like Avon, and yeah, so it's, yeah, it's good fun. It's been. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, so, I, did you like the brandy? I, I, I'm actually very much enjoy it. It reminds me uh, very much of a, a nice wine so finished. Um, this did malt. this did just hit the shelves, so they do have. <laughs> I thought I saw it at Specs. Yep. Can I see it? Yep, definitely. So that just hit the shelves. 
Um, and it's only nine years old. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you really taste that, you know, the brandy cask finish. Two years finished in the brandy cask. Basically. Two years finished in yeah. brandy cask. Non chill. So is it is it nine years old plus two years, or is it uh, seven plus two? Nine years of nine years old overall. Uh, seven years in ex whiskey casks, basically. Uh, casks have previously held scotches. Non chill filtered. Then, finished in brandy cask. And then two years finished in a brandy cask. And that's the thing you'll find with really all distilled products, unchilled filtered. So that's one thing they. We've talked with, about that yeah. on the show too. Uh, there's there's a couple of key indicators of, of uh, a little bit more effort put behind the, the spirit itself Definitely. and, and non chill filtered, higher proof. Mm-hmm. Those are all great signs. Even mm-hmm. before ever tasting it, uh, it's a and, and scotch I think really shines in that hundred and ten plus range. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely a fan. I'm gonna have a little more if you No, want definitely, that. man. Go Let's ahead. No, definitely. I'm glad you enjoyed it, so like I said, I honestly it was the first time I tasted it and Deanson's always one that you know, really always surprises me how pleasant and nice it is. Sure. Um, you know, I was a big Buna, you know, you knew Buna um, for a while. So I'm sorry, Buna Haven. I want to say that because a lot of people be like, wait, what did what, you just say? What's Buna? Yeah, yeah. yeah, what's Buna? But it's Buna Haven. And, um, you know, I even like the Lechik and, you know, the Tobamori is growing on me, but we hadn't really had enough of Tobamori around. Sure. Texas is actually one of the lucky markets because you can still find Tobamori 10 year on the shelf. Yeah. The rest of the All country. Time. The rest of the country are out. Yeah, I yeah. remember for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a, a, almost a twenty-year-old Lecheg is, is, <laughs> and that is how you pronounce it, right? Lecheg. Correct. For those yes. Listening. Yeah. Indeed. So well, I good. always like to have that discussion on here because uh, during the Glenn Morangy ep- episode, we had uh, some some debate on a few words. So right. Um, it's it's. Uh, I'm very excited to get to the, the the other five bottles of high proof. Hey, I just wanted to make sure I brought something. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you hit it out of the park. Yeah. I'm excited. I haven't done much of the Buno Hobbins mm-hmm. limited release stuff like the PX. Yeah. Uh, I did t- taste it and I was very happy with it. Uh, I'm excited to see the brand move in this new fun direction. It's, it's definitely fun. It's definitely creative. So, I mean, the I, cool things that we've seen coming out of them, it, it keeps it moving and it's, it seems like it's, I can't say ahead of trans, but it seems like it's it's at least hitting with all the bigger guys. In, are doing in the so. Scotch market, I think you're right on par. Yeah. But you know, obviously the people have been doing it for years, but it hasn't been in the the surge that it has been the last couple of years. No, definitely. Um, especially in Texas. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you actually, I mean, uh, there's the facets to it. But obviously, these limited releases are partially for America. But if you actually go to the distilleries themselves, we often do, you know, like um, fill your own cask. Uh, your own bottling and that so sure. there's a lot of those uh, rare varieties as well that uh, come from the distillers, distilleries themselves you know yep. when you, you go and visit them this is a, a, a you hit, yeah. out, hit out of the park nice yeah, man yeah. what's the word I'm looking for this is a, a win uh, yeah. uh, uh, an easy win mm-hmm. uh, and this is available not it's, just in Texas, right? We have a lot of we have a lot of listeners out of Texas so. it's man the weird thing about it is that's gonna hit it's gonna it's hit erratic our, yeah it's gonna well <laughs> So we get our allocation. Like you said, 500 cases. So the U.S. might have gotten 200 cases. Yeah, I see. And so out of that 200. How much uh, came to Texas? Oh, man. I'm the uh, the manager over that. I should know the exact number. But I think it was right about 30 to 40 cases Okay, um, that's, that that's, came to Texas. That's the size of some of our barrels. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, six bottle cases. So, yeah, it's not much. Um, but, again, uh, only place you're going to find is specs. And yeah. So, um, and, uh, but how it breaks out for the states, how we look at business is obviously New York gets their fair share. Um, Texas is second for us, and then um, Florida, California, and Illinois. Um, so we heavy up in those markets, and then we, of course, spread it out to make sure all markets have it. So we try to m- at least make sure, and it's the same problem that we have with Buna 18. Sure. So um, like Buna 18 year, we don't have a lot of it. We only get oh, seven, 800 cases a year of Buna 18. So for the whole U.S. Sure. So it just kind of comes and goes. Um, and then same thing on all these limited releases that we're looking at. I actually think um, the Palo, shoot, it might all, it might already be gone. So everything you're looking at actually came out right before the holidays. Um, so it was good timing, but it was kind of like bad timing for people that are like sure. not in the know of it because then some of this might be gone. Specs does still have quite a bit of this, um, the Tobamori's and the uh, electric but the Bunas, 
if you see it, you might want to go ahead and grab it because that's going to be it. So, sure, um, sure. But it's a good market for it. It's all downtown's a good spot to find yeah. it, of course, um, <laughs> and then c- kind of go from there. But that's why I want to at least make sure you taste them. Yeah. And so, uh, and then go from there. Just to, you know, a lot of people don't know. And that's where I was trying to tell them. Just you know, go ahead and talk more about the distilleries. That sure. way they can kind of you know hear the story um, from guys. This that is in Dufftown, right, right, or no? Uh, no, this is actually from the Southern Highlands. Uh, it's I, near Dune. Because I thought I remembered uh, when we visited Glenfiddich and Balvini, I thought I remembered passing Deanston. Uh, you may have on the way up, but it is sort of near Sterling. It's about uh, 100 yeah, so we miles were, from We were coming Duff from Loch Ness, and so we came down through. Yeah. Uh, what you, you fly out of? Well, you go out for. Well, we, 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 we basically drove through the. The, the entire country. No, but I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. But where'd you fly? Where'd you fly into and out of? Okay, so we flew into was it Glasgow, Ed- or Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Okay, we flew in Edinburgh, drove up to Loch Ness, stayed in a monastery up there, and then drove over to Speyside and then down to Balvini and, and Glenfiddich. Okay. And I thought I remember passing Deanston. Uh, it's not there, so it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's in the Southern Highlands. So it doesn't. It would be hard to. Actually, you can't really pass Deanston on the motorway. It's kind of a little bit of the way. Uh, it's near Dune. Uh, where it's kind of famous for a castle, but Dean's is just up river, up the river, the river Teeth. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I don't think you would pass it. Easy get to though from from Edinburgh, Glasgow, respectively. Let's see here. <clears throat> and then shoot, you guys were what TripAdvisor or something like distillery? Oh yeah, that is year. not. That is not. Yeah, <laughs> that is not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Slightly the other way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been we're pretty very I think you four can, or five stars on TripAdvisor for uh, for uh, visits to the distillery. Yeah, uh, that's what it is. And because the dist- as I was saying, the distillery is so close to Edinburgh, Glasgow, where quite a lot of uh, tourists come to the tour center there. Sure. So we do lots of uh, sh- show people around the, the distillery and how it works. Um, but yeah, no, it's a great distillery. It's uh, it used to be a cotton mill before it was actually a, a distillery. So it's got a very unusual history in that regard. Tobermory. Tobermory. Smells good. Piece of nose. Mm-hmm. What if I just told you I didn't like it? Would you? I'm just kidding. Hey. <laughs> well, you know, it's it live, happens. so anything can happen. Isn't it? <laughs> I've had that happen to me at a trade show before. Oh, I, you oh, know, man. I've had, I've, I've, I've been to, you know, I don't know if you knew, but I have my own trade show. Yeah. Well. Uh, they, I've had, I've had many people or seen many people. I've, I've told brands I didn't yeah. like stuff, but not you. Know, you can do it in a respectful way. Yeah. And, and some stuff is just not in people's wheelhouse. You know. Yeah. I know. Uh, I can, sorry, I got a mustache here that's tickling me, but. I've got a, a lot of friends who are bourbon only drinkers, and I've introduced them to something as core and mm-hmm. as as delicious as Macallan Twelve. That just that core yep. perfect price range, perfect age, and and they were like, it's it's too weird. And I'm like, what do you mean weird? <laughs> <laughs> or it's peated. Well, it's not peated. Yeah. It's too smoky. Well, it's not smoky. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like so it, it's it's. I think that there's a way to critique brands and, and, and do it in a way and honestly I think it means more right mm-hmm. so if I if I say I didn't like something and I by the way haven't even tasted it I'm not saying yeah. that okay. but if I said I didn't like something it when I do endorse something I think it means it has more value more mm-hmm. weight behind it someone had made a joke uh, last week I had mentioned I didn't like a, a brand um, a bottling a specific bottling gotcha. of, a, of, a, of an American whiskey it's not even bourbon mm-hmm. And someone had said, I didn't know that you didn't like anything. <laughs> it was kind of like a punch, yeah. like you, you say you like everything, yeah. right? So, Well, I mean, that and, I mean, some of the the back and forth that you and I've had, and actually this is lighter than Deanston. So, Which is mm, very light. Yeah. Mm. I was felt, proof on this? Shoot. It's 55. Yeah, wow. 55. One, yeah. It's only like, it's a little less than 2% below. Yeah. That's another one that drinks under proof, but it, all the way through it drinks under proof. Yeah. I would have probably... Probably should have started with the Tobermory. I, I didn't realize it was that much lighter than yeah. the Brandy Cast, but yeah. Yeah, to- Tobermory is a very, uh, you know, it's from Mull, <laughs> an Isla Mull, so it's a very small distillery. You know, uh, Deanston, you, you, we're at full production at the moment, and they're just producing over 2 million liters a year, but Tobermory does less than a million, basically. Wow. So uh, very small stills, but very high stills. They've got a very, uh, a lin arm that goes to the condenser, sure. they've got an S-shape, a lot of copper contact, so uh, it gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of the oils recondensing, so quite a light spirit, I think, uh, compared to many other What's the story on this, this 12? Uh, this is a limited edition again, around about 1,600 bottles. Can I see it? Yep. The bottle or the, uh, uh, the bottle or box, whatever's got wh- the most whatever. story on it. Uh, uh, that's both. great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so the cool thing, actually, this box doesn't have the coloring of it, but Fino Sherry Cask Finish. Yeah, Fino. 
Uh, so how two long years. Was it? Two years. And it's ten years next whiskey cast again. Yeah, so that's that's a crazy amount for finishing. I know a lot of people who are finishing for. Um, I, I know someone locally who's finishing uh, for less than six months. You yeah. Know? Uh, two so years for a finish is pretty. Where are they finishing at? Over well, here. I, I, they're, I, is it I, in Texas or America? Uh, or? They're they're sourcing from out of state and, okay. and finishing here. Well, but yeah. so climate. That's what you're sure. Yeah, sure. But in this in this case, it's really a, 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 a economic decision. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, um, well, which, yeah. which is fine. I mean, you know, for for years we did full wine cask maturation and a lot of spirits, and then we changed to finishing. And when that first came out, there was a, mm -hmm. some criticism around that. And now you have something referred to as seasoning, right? Mm -hmm. So you get those sherry cask season stuff. And and I actually started giving, uh, you know, full disclosure. McAllen's a sponsor of the show, but I I can no. at least doesn't care if I speak freely. No. Uh, you only said McAllen twice. I, so. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I could I could use someone else's no, example, good, but but I've given them a hard time, and yeah. then we kind of talk to them, and it's it's there is a, a global boom behind whiskey. And you either have to change your your what yeah. you're known for, or you have to, you know, you have to go the exact. Yeah. You have to do away with all wine finishes because you can't keep up and do full maturation, or mm -hmm. you do finishing and season cask as mm -hmm. a way to maintain at least as much as possible to that what you're known for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you 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 have to change the entire face of the brand by doing what you haven't been known for for hundreds of years you know mm -hmm. so I, i've given i've given a lot of uh criticism but i also kind of i i i, yeah. I, I retract a little bit of it i think it, no, definitely. um finishing is still so much you know uh two years is such a longer commitment and a costly one compared mm -hmm. to one year finishing eight months finishing um and this this smells and tastes pretty fantastic and um yeah, because I mean the Tobermory ten year old, it was all an ex bourbon cast for ten, you know, ten years. So this is something a little different, a little bit extra. So you, hopefully you'll get a lot of the. I get a lot of kind of citrus or toffee notes from this particular toffee. One. There's a, a ton of uh, the the word caramel is used quite a bit, but there's a there's a there's an actual kind of a melted caramel sweetness to it. Like it's not super intense, but it's a very nice. Um, Almost chocolatey caramel, mm. almost like a. I hate to say the word frappuccino, no. but um, <laughs> it's it, the sweetness on this is very. Um, it's un, underexpressed. It's funny because when you look at our professional tasting notes on it, you, you were going to say frapp, but it says espresso and dark chocolate. Pretty damn close. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. So uh, yeah, I mean, this one it's been out for a little bit. I was just trying to look at kind of the price point on this bad boy. And let me see the box, by the way. Yeah. Sure. And that's one cool thing um, that I've noticed. Uh, they we've really stepped up the game on the boxes. Oh, I mean, and no, so, no doubt. Yeah, um, even I mean, you'll you'll see that when we get to it. But everything it's it's nice. You know, it's definitely you know bringing it up to that um, that consumer. Dark coffee, purchase. dried fruit, yep. espresso, dark chocolate. I mean, I'm pretty, you're, you're, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a little credit. Yeah, here. there you go. Did you write that? I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I cheated. I, took, <laughs> right? I looked it up before I looked we did it the up, show. Right? <laughs> oh, no, but man. it's nice. And so that's the thing. So Tobin Worry, actually, you can still find the tenure in um, the Texas market. Um, maybe some scragglers out in some other markets. Sure. But uh, it's been out. We've been uh, out of Tobin Worry for at least two years. And so, Wait, oh, what do you mean? I'm, Without production. Oh, yeah. So you're not doing the, the ten anymore. No. So moving forward, we will have a Tobermory twelve year. The that limited will, edition, yeah. No, it won't be a limited edition. So the Fino cast is a limited release, but they're going to come out with the twelve year that will be hopefully core. The, the core. Yeah. And so, um, so you're you're no longer doing ten. You're going up mm -hmm. to twelve. That's yeah. that's impressive. That's yeah. worth noting, anyways. I mean, yeah. uh, the big thing for years. Same thing in regards to like moving on and off brand. Uh, NOS, no age stated whiskeys have caught a lot of flack and for you to move that up is, mm -hmm. is a pretty well I mean it's it was just one that when we were sitting down in a meeting that they had basically told us that you know they liked the 10 but at the same time they wanted a little bit more they wanted a little bit more flavor and you know something that I guess responded to the a, consumer a, a ton of wine influence yeah mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's nice. It's a little bit lighter. I almost wish we would have tasted that one first, but yeah. um, it's still nice. So, um, Well, this has got some youth to it, right? That mm -hmm. nine years really, uh, I always call it a youthful bite. It's yeah. got a little bit of uh, uh, 
the the burn really comes through, but yeah. not in a in a negative way. It's just it kind of shows its age a little bit. Yeah. But again, there's nothing at a at a fifty five plus. And I've talked to people about how pricing works on the mm-hmm. show, which I love to kind of pull yeah. that curtain back. You guys are are putting ten years into something, and if you work backwards on price, you're not making much on this. Yeah, and uh, uh, it, it's 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 crazy with bourbon now. You can pay ninety dollars for a nine year old bourbon. Yeah, would not have to deal with imports or shipping. You know, uh, and you can get some twelve year old scotch or some some ten year old yeah. scotch con- consistently. At, at a sub fifty dollar price yeah. range, or right around there, which is mm. just it's crazy to me yeah. the amount of people who are putting. I remember there's a there's a, a, a big jeweler here local, a guy named Jay Friedman, uh, great guy, uh, huge family man, and 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 he he does pretty well for himself. And I remember him telling me Scotch is a rich man's game. Yeah. I was like, not anymore, man. Yeah. Bourbon is a rich man's you, game. You see, he threw out Freeman like right before Valentine's Day. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not a plug, although Jay, Jay's Jay's Jay does. I mean, they do they do some pretty incredible stuff. I think he worked uh, last year. He worked no, yeah. on the Astros trophy. No, definitely. Yeah. No, so, definitely. Do you know Jay? No, I don't know him personally, but I know Freeman stores and stuff sure, like that. Yeah, so, yeah. But no, it's well. So yeah. he he's. Uh, I don't know that. I don't think it's called Freeman. There's a, is there's it not a, Freeman? No, he's a partner with, okay. with a few guys, but and they've got. Uh, I've got an office building. Okay. You have to like go through security, gotcha. get taken up to a floor. Oh, you know, so he's one of those. He's, yeah, he's one of those. One of those guys. Of those gotcha. Guys. Okay. Uh, this is this right, is fantastic. Yeah. I'm very happy with that. Yep. No, it's got a lot of interesting flavors. In yep, definitely. Well for a 12 year old. So I'm excited like, just from the 12 to move up. 21. 21's been out for a little bit. We've well, had the 21. Should we do the 21 next or the 19 next? Uh, the 19 smoky, so I suggest yeah, the we're gonna 21 do, okay. would yeah. be the, the Dude, more rational. I'm excited. So, yeah, we'll do the 21, then we'll bounce to the moin. Uh, yeah, we'll do the moin, and then we'll finish off the pile of then, yeah, cause Okay, we'll, when are you going back? Uh, 24th 200. of February. And then, yeah, this is going to be about 500. And then... That's gonna be actually the Moen's not actually not bad. So you probably see that about one one ten for the Moen. What's that box? Yeah, the box is pretty legit. So when you take it uh-huh. out, it actually <laughs> locks in. Yeah. And so like you have to turn it to to take it out. Yeah. Or the bottle won't even move. So interesting. They've come up with Oof. some cool, and you'll see. Wait to it too. Yeah, yeah. And that's a this ship's in a two pack. In a, yeah, it's only two in there. Five hundred bucks. Oh man, I'm getting treated like a king today. Man, I told you I was gonna take care of you, man. And then hey, we got just got some small ones. We're gonna taste at the uh, society event, you know. Oh, that's gonna be no, cool. Nothing too special um, there. The the <laughs> yeah the the two forty year old and the two forty two year old. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. gonna be good. Two forty and 42. so we've 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 cut, we're changing the event a little bit this year. We're going to. Um, we're going to ex- give people a little bit more elbow room. Mm-hmm. Uh, tickets are a little. Ahead of schedule, which is great, yeah. right? Especially before uh, the the rodeo here in town. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to take one of the rooms that we like that did a pappy tasting in one room. Uh, after the pappy tasting, we're going to turn that room into the Texas Whiskey. Nice. Uh, we're doing something with Texas Whiskey Association. We're going to have them set up in there, but we're going to turn that room into the place just so you can hit all the great. Uh, Texas, Texas whiskey whiskeys. distilleries, and then uh, that gives people a little bit more room on the floor. Ah, I think uh, it I, I, makes sense. Though. I mean, it's <laughs> Texas. You want to separate those from everybody else because, hey, this is to me, and it's it's very prideful for any brand that comes out of Texas. You sure, know? and and that's why yeah. some brands caught so much <laughs> well, yeah. black was the perception that exactly. it may not have been from Texas. No, right? that's so. the thing. So it's like, hey, if if you're truly from Texas and you want to be represented here. Then set them out. So yeah. Speaking of uh, Just, not being used to certain parts of our culture, mm. uh, have you noticed how prideful we are in regards to our like Texas heritage? Well, I've seen a lot of flags. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so next to the American one, but uh, for uh, Texas whiskey, do you have any laws that are different to the, the rest of the country? So so well, no. Uh, the our laws are written in a way. Um, that not I'm not going to say that there are loopholes, but there are ways you can word certain things on the label. But the TTB has uh, guidelines that mention that if you are going to list a 
uh, a regional specific like a Tennessee whiskey or a Texas whiskey that it needs to be from from those places. So right. um, Tennessee whiskey actually enacted a law in 2011. I believe it was 11, where they were very specific on the guidelines. Texas isn't there yet. We're mm-hmm. working on it. But there is an organization like Texas Whiskey Association that is um, that has created their own seal mm-hmm. and are only giving that seal to brands that meet their interpretation mm-hmm. of the uh, TTB guidelines. So they're holding each other accountable uh, until the states get caught up with the laws. Gotcha. So um, we are going to have that done. I think it'll be a fun extension to give people a little bit more uh, room to move around. Right. Uh, and and of course that makes it easier for uh, our Scotch brethren I'm to, to, to really. I'm gonna have to taste the notes from this. Time. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, just so you know, it's my favorite whiskey of all our. Oh really? Our brown, oh, so yeah. please beat it up. So, beat it up. Oh, uh, <laughs> You signed off on this, <laughs> so it's a it smells. It's Manzanilla got a sweetness to it. Yeah, Manzanilla. Yeah, Manzanilla. yeah. 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 So uh, the I think the first cask I realized was Manzanilla, or the first one that caught my eye was was Cavallon. Okay, <clears throat> but Cavallon's a little bit tricky with their representation. You're you're talking about mostly a three year old whiskey, give or take, and uh, and, a, and a very wet cask, so to speak. I, don't, I, don't, I know you don't. I, don't, I know you don't. I don't but I don't work for a brand. Age, yeah. I don't work for a brand. I don't judge on ages. You know? I, th- there's there's plenty of great uh, uh, brand. There's plenty. Of, let's try that again. There's yeah. plenty of great. Uh, it's not high proof. No, it hey, out. hey, it's coming. Uh, Cavallon ha- has a lot of great stuff. But what I'm saying is, is the first thing that caught my eye that mm-hmm. was anything Manzanilla was them, and and I actually had. Uh, I'm gonna name drop. Makes me, makes me feel important. I had lunch with John Campbell from Lafroy. Okay, nice. And he he had mentioned that they had tested the waters with a Manzanilla cask, yeah. and I believe it was Manzanilla. I could be wrong. Gotcha. But it was uh, it was so bad oh. that they just scrapped it. And then last year they did the Fino cask instead. Okay. So right. Um, uh, yeah, Manzanilla is a, it's like a Fino, but it's from a coastal um, a coastal sherry from Andalusia in, in Spain. The smell on this is um, almost a. Almost an apple mm. like an apple, a fresh uh, red apple, mm. like a baked red apple. You know, like the kind your grandmother used to yeah. make with green apples? Yeah. But the more red freshness. Like, you made me hungry. <laughs> my, my stomach growled on that one. <laughs> no, but... Um, yeah, a lot of fruit in this. Yeah. Oh, tons of fruit. And it's a very long finish. It's very subtle. It's uh, unfinished? Uh, no, it's very long finish. It's oh, long finish. And... Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's fifty three point eight percent, but you'd, I mean, I don't feel any burn with this one. You no, know, it's, again, it's, another underproof. Uh, what's the? How long is it in Manzanilla? Two years. Two years. Ago. Yeah. So, so I, I'll be honest with you. It, it distinctly reminds me of an apple brandy from Copper and Kings. There's a. I'm a huge Copper and Kings supporter on the mm-hmm. show, and they have an apple brandy that they do that. Uh, has a yeasty biscuit quality, okay. and that's what I'm getting from this. It's, right. it's kind of a yeasty uh, a dinner roll. Mm. I mean, on the palate. Can't go wrong with yeast and biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> or dinner rolls. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? I, I, oh, it's nice. Definitely. I mean, it's, you know, to be able to open this up when I'm at home. <laughs> it's 21 years old, too. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's one hell of an age. What's it's, the price on that one? Uh, I think it's 240 retail in America, roughly. Yeah, that's uh, so uh, going to be suggested retail. Yeah. I believe we're going to closer to the 200s here. Sure, yeah, sure. But that's so. still that's a great price for, yeah. I mean, and that's another thing that's crazy is, uh, is you're going to pay much more. I love Barrel, mm-hmm. uh, and Barrel caught some a little bit of flack for their – the recent fifteen year old oh, bourbon. Gotcha, yep. It's actually a blend of fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen year old bourbon for two fifty. Yeah. And that's actually comparatively not a bad price. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what people got confused on is the way our laws work here is again, if you put an age statement on there, it's gotta be the youngest distillate in the in the yeah. in the bottle. Yeah. Uh, they released we did a couple fourteen year old bottles at eighty five a piece. So uh-huh. people's minds think 14, 15 from 85 to 250, but really you're getting a lot of 16 and 17 year old bourbon in there. It's actually a great price comparatively. Yeah. But again, 21 year old scotch that goes through this entire process, uh, two year finishing in Manzanilla cask. Yeah. And I'm, this is, um, I'm very happy with this. Mm. Thank nice. you very much. <laughs> and this is your favorite. It is my favorite, definitely. And this great box comes in as well. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. And Tobermory itself, the place where it's made, I mean, it's a very beautiful village yeah. on Mull. I wish I had that. Uh, it's, um, 
It's got a, you know, the, all the houses are painted different colours. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to pull a picture of. Yeah, yeah, trying to get a picture, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a wee fishing village in oh, the north of the Mulls, but there. yeah, yeah, it's uh, can't get much of a better place to stay, really. Oh, nice. Yeah. That 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 means something else here in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, we don't discriminate, right? <laughs> Man, that that is. Uh, but yeah, definitely colourful. It's fruit. This mm. sounds, all right, let me see the tasting notes. Let's, oh, let's yeah. knock oh, this out. It's actually really good on the it's really good on the bottle. All oh, right. it's on the box it's, too. It's on the so box. Yeah. All right. Cool. So let's see here. Uh, dried fruit, pear, citrus, spiced orange, leather, oak. Okay. Citrus, dried fruit notes, hints of coffee, bitter chocolate. I don't get the bitter chocolate. I I never really get the chocolate, man. I get rich oak and subtle cuz I think I when, when we think of chocolate, <laughs> yeah. we at least Americans we're thinking you know, yeah. uh, I mean, it's sexual chocolate, chocolate like me. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. You're black? Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. What, what time stamp is that? Yeah, no, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am black. But um, the, I, I seriously, I, it's very rare that I get chocolate really in anything that I taste. Um, I, I but usually some, in Pedro Jimenez, I, I, I will get I will get a little bit more raisin. See, than I, like how the, I, I see. I agree yeah. with you. I get more phenolic raisiny notes, yeah. like a, like a like a. You know how wine can can reach a smokyish point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always say phenols. So mm-hmm. I always say yep, phenolic, yep. Um, but uh, chocolate to me always reminds me of, of a chocolate brown sugar bourbon. Mm-hmm. Right, that's what I always get those those core notes and that almost in all bourbons, yeah. no matter what they are, it's all chocolate brown sugar. Right. Mm. Um, this is uh, this is really interesting. No, it's nice. Like, man, you know, a lot of times when we do the trade shows and people come up um, to our table, they're like, well, what do you drink? And I'm like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, do you really? I was like, it really That's depends. a loaded question yeah, because because like, if you say your spirits, they're going to say, well, of course you're going to say your spirits. Well, yeah. And then if you don't say your spirits, they're like, yeah. well, what's wrong with your spirits? You no, drink well, your spirits. It's, a, it's a stupid, it's a it, crappy question. It's And then it's always, I, I tell you, some of the things uh, that – It'd be interesting if we could get all the suppliers together that do the trade shows and just do a reel and say, hey, what are the things that really bother you? About these events? Uh, it, so well, that, yeah. That's how our event started. Yeah. Was, was, uh, Houston's the fourth large, and I know people are tired of hearing the story, but <laughs> there, it's the fourth largest city in the U.S., oh, yeah. but we didn't have a good, any good events. And yeah. I'm not saying my event is great, but... But it's not the, really. It, yeah. yeah. Have you been? <laughs> not, no, no, no. I hadn't been to yours. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't knocking yours. Sure. I'm saying the, the ones. All, yeah. all the events yeah. have, uh, every year, yeah. less brands. It's less, just a money grab. It, 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 correct. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And, and some of the prices yeah. are just incredible. So yeah. I reached out to all the brands and I, and I asked them, I was like, what do you hate about these events? And it was like. I gave them a, a right to say their yeah. honest feelings, yeah. you know, and they just unloaded with all this negative <laughs> feedback. We hate this. We hate that. Yeah. We hate that. There's a... Um, You're like a therapist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just got rid of all that. Like every, yeah. everything they hate, we got rid of. Yeah. Non-licensed, so bring in your own product. Um, we we, uh, we charge the least amount of any event yeah. for any tables that I know of, if, unless no, yeah. there's another event out there. Um, there was another event that happened recently where I, I asked the guy mm-hmm. what those table prices were for in case someone that can help get, yeah. us, get him some brands. And he said 5000 And yeah. I was like, oh, well, you know, good luck with yeah. that. Yeah, no, I can't really help you there. I mean, you got some brands that they have to spend a certain amount of you know dollars for their budgets because they have it. And then you got the smaller guys and new guys that are trying to up and come and that are making great whiskeys. But it's like... Do I spend five grand there, or do I spend five grand on a different activation where I can actually see some sales? Sure. And, and let so, me let me yeah. say something about that. So, the and and I notice this every year. Um, small brands when they're first getting into market, they've got they do a hard push marketing wise. Mm-hmm. They will have that money for one year. Mm-hmm. They will not have it for next year. No. And you may be able to get away with something one time. Yeah. But you have to, and I. I try. I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, but I try real hard to kind of align our priorities around the brand so that they want to come back. Mm-hmm. And we we work with United specifically mm-hmm. that anything you sell at the event, gotcha. You can you can buy at the event. Yeah. So what we do is we partner with Village Liquor, who's who's been fantastic ever since Parav took over a couple of years ago. I didn't I wasn't really in the industry yep. back then, but Parav is so 
uh, he's very very wise for his age. Same as Valerian. No, go ahead. Par- par- Parav, uh, w- we basically created uh, an inventory from all of our brands. So eventually, I'll send uh-huh. you a sheet that you cool. fill out. Yeah. And anything you want available to be sold at the event, he can order, order at the it. event Sweet. and then pick it up at, at any four of the locations. Nice. Within he- so, so, so we that way you can see that ROI. If you're going to pay whatever to come to the event, exactly. then you can you can move well, some product. And to me, um, and stuff like this is just it's worthy of, of being picked yeah. up. Yeah, and I mean, like I told you, you know, when I was doing Gordon McPhail, I was in and out of planes, flying, and one of the there's two events that always stick out in my head. Ken and Eccles, it, I think that's the guy that does. Gordon McPhail now, right? Yes, yes, Ken he, yes, yes. So he works for Martinetti. I forgot the what they call M- it. Martin Martin Gennetti. I've never known how to pronounce Martinetti, it. Right. Yeah. Martinetti, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're out of uh, Martin oh, Gennetti. Yeah, like Massachusetts, idiot. but yeah, no, yeah, right, Mark Gennetti. Yeah. But um, so and that it basically it was three of us that started the whole Gordon McPhail deal with Martinetti sure. and um, got it up and running. But with that, there was really. Two events. There was one in Sarasota that we spoke about today, mm-hmm. um, and the cool thing about that event was, first off, they did a, it was a panel of, and you pick like ten brand ambassadors or in, distillers or whoever. Wait, where was this? This was in Sarasota today. No, 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 no. This was. Uh, they're actually it's coming up in April, right? Uh, which one? Are you the, saying, yeah, the tenth of April. Yeah. Okay, so but the way they set it up is, hey, so and, and it's a consumer event. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Seriously, so. It's um, the way they set it up. It's like a four day event. So I, I'm working on that as well. Yeah, so I want a multiple day event. Yeah. So yeah. one day it's, hey, you can come and do this tasting, and you get ten people, right? And with those ten people, they'll talk about their brand. You bring one bottle, and we're gonna do a tasting. You know, small tasting for. I think they only do like fifty people at this tasting, but they'll ask questions. We're up there and talking about our whiskeys. Sure. Everybody has like you know ten minutes, whatever it is. So. Um, and then the next day is the actual tasting. They have a tasting room, and then you walk out that door, and guess what? That's the place where you buy the liquor. <laughs> and yeah. so it's literally like, yeah. you like it, go buy it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So and then I was well, like, and people want yeah. that too. It's not. It's, it's not harder a, it's in not Texas. A, it, yeah. yeah. Well, it's real hard in Texas. Yeah. The way we have to do it is so it's all uploaded on an app on your phone, so you can at the event. Oh, nice! If you're standing at the table Sweet. and you say, "Is that available?" and you say, yeah. okay. "Yes, it's available," because you're the one that filled out that form. Yeah, you're the one that tells me what's available. Nice. They can order it from their phone, or they can go right over there yeah. to to that table and, and buy it. And it's something that is it's not done anywhere else in the state. No other event does it. Yeah. And and in order to do it legally, it's a very fine line. Like yeah. We had to call TABC and say. This is what we want to do, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's actually quite simple, uh, but it is still a very very fine line yeah. to be able to do it legally. Uh, but uh, you can taste something, yeah. and if you want it, you don't have to go hunting for it. You can secure it there. That's the big problem that people have nowadays. Yeah, is everyone has to hunt for stuff. I think a lot of it is when you look at some of these brands, and the thing I learned really with Scotch, and I can't, I'm not talking for everybody, sure, but a majority of I would say people that need to sell it without calling anybody out, um, you know, just kind of did, um, that need to sell it to help us promote the brands for our sales reps and distributors. Sometimes they don't feel comfortable with selling single malt scotches or blended scotches. They feel like, you know, I'm going to walk into an account and, you know, somebody's going to know more about the scotch than me. Like, oh, hey, I'm going to walk into Chris today and I got to sell this. Oh crap! I can't even pronounce this. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like a Buna. Then they show you, and then the first thing you're like, "Well, shoot! Oh, Buna Haben. They're like, "Oh, yeah, that's yeah. how you say it." And then you're like, "Really?" Or Some, Oban. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, Orangey. Exact. So, like and you know, it's not that we don't do the trainings. We do the trainings. It's just they feel more comfortable with bourbons, tequilas, it's vodkas, easy, man. And, you uh, know, it's pappies. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, that's as that's yeah. as good as it as good as it gets, right? So, and a lot of it. I mean, honestly, like a brand like Glenn Farkless, a lot of it too. Um, you know, yeah, it depends on how much money they're putting behind it. Sure. Same thing with us. How much money you're gonna put behind it? How much you're gonna incentivize the reps to get it out there and stuff like that so but my thing of it is really with and i know you're a big px guy so oh, i'm a good i'm a big pete guy too and there's there's a some very familiar so familiar you, notes coming from when you right did now. um devil's river uh the other guy that was did you watch on, that episode yeah 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 so, you so, did what yeah. you think so when the other guy was sitting <laughs> over there um he, he's not a pete guy 
right? He, he's uh, like, oh, I just here, Alan, Alan. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what it was. He's like, yeah, I just and I'm like, dude, I got two Pete's. I want to put in so. Front of him. So he's a Buna fan. Yeah, the only the only Pete that Alan Denny is a fan of is Buna Haben. and he for a while was picking up. Um, I'm glad you said that. Is it the because we're gonna have a story to tell you when we get to Buna? Is this the fourth segment? Oh wow, this is flying by. Okay. So we're we've got to speed through some okay, things. Cool. But but I think it's the twenty one or the twenty five Buna oh, yeah. that comes in the box. Yeah. The wooden box. Yep. Uh he he out like Alan, you know, a lot of us aren't rich people, right? So mm-hmm. Alan Alan was uh regularly, at least once a year, buying a bottle of Buna Haben twenty five. Then we went up in price on it. Yeah, and then he went up in price and yeah. I think you also I think you also went up in proof a little bit. Or is it down and proof? Uh, no, nah, I think we well because there we, was a, there was something else than just price. We do forty three, right? Or forty six. I'm sorry, yeah, we do forty six. We've done since two thousand ten. Yeah, uh, they kind of ch- ch- yeah, we changed. Fill so we went up because we always do the forty six kind of across on the quarter sure, range. Sure. Yeah. So, but uh, long story short, on that one is we had to go up on sure. price. Well, yeah. Well, I don't blame we're, you. We were freaking running out and of twenty five years. So, <sighs> and that's where it was like, it all right, incredible. we got to. I know some other twenty fives that are going for 600, 700 bucks. So <laughs> well, not, we we bad. raised it. For, to a thousand that shocked the world because it was whoa I Wait, got this at three ninety nine. You raised the twenty five up to a thousand. Well, we raised it, but then we brought it back down. So we, then now we're back down to that six ninety nine mark and stuff like that. Wait, but, then yeah. maybe I have to go to twenty one then. No, no, no. It was twenty five. We it was it was short. We raised it for like a, maybe a half a year. No, no, then, no, no. But but you guys do produce twenty one. No, we. I well, want to say he was. I said I want to say he was paying one fifty. Then he was paying two forty. And if that, and if you went up to a thousand, then no, no, that's no. Not this, it. the the thousand was just last year. So this was just last year. But no, that's right for the twenty five year, the wooden box. Sure. No, that and it was down at that price point. And because I remember when we changed price, mm. I went to um, a retailer. It wasn't specs, I promise. But uh, I went to a retailer and they were still selling it for three ninety nine. So I, I went and bought like two bottles because like shoot, I can't sure. get it at that price. Yeah, yeah. And just so and I they're happy for, just to get rid of the bottles. Yeah, yeah, for my samples. Then I went back the next day and they were like, oh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it caught on pretty quick. But um, it's one of those things where we just tried to slow down the demand, which we did a good job on that real quick. <laughs> so, but uh, go ahead. So not to jump the gun here, but so this um, I'm such a a, a a lover of Isla. Mm. And uh, I know it's not. I know yeah. it's not. I'm, let me finish my thought. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to, he's he's about like, to give me. Yeah. No, uh, it, this reminds me so distinctly of uh, Oogie, mm. right? Uh, Ardbeg Oogadol. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then um, there's a there's an independent bottler named Smokehead. Right, yes. That are $45 okay. a piece. Mm. And it's unconfirmed, but it's confirmed that, that Smokehead is Ardbeg, young Ardbeg. Right. Uh, that, this has got so much of that beautiful, bright, uh, but there's age on this. Like, right. Mm. So it's, it's, none of that young bite is there. Mm. But it's got that familiar peat, that beautiful island peat, that mm-hmm. Hebridean, yeah. uh, gorgeousness. This, this right here smells and tastes, um, very, Familiar. Yeah, I got a lot of smoked bacon kind of notes. Yeah, there. this it's is like, you know, it's this a is nice. in the palate. Um, and again, fifty-five points. I hate to, <laughs> I hate to be a broken record. <laughs> All of these drink under proof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And I think that might have to do with the age, right? So if you take something and you age it for an incredible amount of time, even at a higher proof, it's going to be a, a bit more subtle, mm-hmm. a bit more quieter. You're mm-hmm. so used to eight-year-old bourbon at cast strength that it's not. Oh yeah, the the burn is what you think of. You you forget that the burn also is part yeah. of the age, right? Yeah. Uh, but at 19 years old, even at 55.7, this is uh yeah, it comes across really nice. So big thing I know he was going to tell Jesus you is uh, if you guys did want to sponsor the show, I think yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bother you about it. This yeah. is so hard bag all day. These two are actually the same distillery. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I know. Oh, yeah. Well, I know. You, well, yeah. I know you know that. Tobermory and, and yes. Lechag are yeah. the same distillery. Yes. So, yeah. Notice it's the same bottle too. Um, so yeah. And the one you're having right now was distilled in 1998 as well. So it's you know from the last century. But uh, yeah. So they do 50 percent production or 56 months production each side basically. Yeah. Wait. I'm so, sorry. Yeah. Say that again. Uh, they'll do six months of when they are in production. They'll do six months of Tobermory, uh, and then they'll clean the distillery, and then they'll and then they'll six do months uh, of, of, of Lechag. Lechag, Yeah. Yep. So yeah. they'll use smoked uh, barley for that. Which to me it's really interesting to see those side by side you know um to see how they taste so much different and what's yeah. the finish on this uh, it's px pedro hammers oh, it's man. two years finished and it's uh, 17 years next whiskey casks basically i really like this good 
That's why we're here. <laughs> hey, man, I tried to make sure I didn't disappoint you. So, My uh, wife and I are in a big um, – look, I love bourbon. Yeah. If you say you hate bourbon, you're going to catch some shit for it here. Hey, I I just told you I'm trying to learn to appreciate. Not not you. I mean I mean the, I mean the group. Yeah, uh, I, lo- I love yeah. the group. But I my roots have always been in Scotch uh, by accident. I I've told this story a bunch too. But the first bottle I ever bought was Lafourg 18. I didn't know that there was non peated peated. I didn't know that there, that smoky wasn't an option. No. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> My roots have always – my passion for whiskey started with, with single malts, mm-hmm. right? Brooklady and uh, Glenmorangie and, and all these great bottles that have just made an impact. Highland Park. Um, this is like a warm hug for my grandmother. <laughs> there you go. Uh, every, every part of this is just – We had a really cool experience in uh, St. Louis when we were doing the uh, whiskey event there. It was whiskey in the winter and – they, um, we were right across from it's Lefroy. Good winter mall. Lefroy. Yeah, yeah. It's a good yeah. Mall. yeah. So we were right across from Lefroy, and they were actually tasting. I believe it was like a thirty here, and people came in running, and I was like, "What in the world?" I was like, "What's going on over there?" And then you know, drinking and drinking, and they come over to our table, and they're like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> and I'm like, "What's up?" Because we had our yeah. 19s yeah. there and we 18s the, yeah. of the that chicken. It was. Uh, they were looking. They're like. Man, this is almost. And yeah, I'm like, and not twelve hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah, and I yeah. was just like, hey. And so yeah. I'll say this: yeah. Lefroig is probably obviously the most sentimental mm-hmm. in my life, but uh, huge fan of the brand. I will say that uh, obviously the longer in oak, the more muted peat gets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, Lefroig is 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 is. 26, 27 is probably the max I want to go. Gotcha. I've had I've had several 30s, several 32s, yeah. uh, and they just aren't quite what I love. And honestly, for 70 bucks, the, the batch strength gotcha, uh, yeah. is, is a real great example well, of what yeah. Isla can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a very yeah. nice 19 years. It's still ton, tons of peat. Uh, wintertime malt, mm-hmm. that is a wintertime malt. The, oh, yeah. I want to be around, I want to wear my Patagonia <laughs> jacket around a campfire. Mm. Well, you know, hey, it'll be there in March. Well, actually, I don't know if that's going to still be around in March, so we'll see. We'll see. I highly encourage you to still bring it, regardless. <laughs> well, if it's still available, put it like that. So we'll definitely, but that's, again, everything we're showing is limited release. So All right, so so, yeah. so we, we're we running out of time. Yep. we got five minutes left. Yep. Let's hit these Bunas. Cool. Okay. Uh, so the next one we'll have is the Buna... Moen. Hey, your own Moen. Uh So it's a very smoky variety from Bunnahaven. Uh, so Bunnahaven, as you probably know, is generally unpeated scotch. However, we do have... Bunnahaven's unpeated yeah, scotch? Yeah. Yes. I thought it was go. lightly peated. I thought it was always lightly peated. Uh, no, no, we, we emphasize in non-peatiness generally uh, mm. with that one. So it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why Alan liked it so much. And But the, but they do about usually... I think that last year they did 35%, normally 10% peated uh, variety. But then this, uh, this eight-year-old is fully matured in Bordeaux French red wine casks. So... Uh, you're going to get a lot of smoke in the nose, but you're also going to get a lot of fruit. We've had fruit. some really big write-ups on this moment, um from, you know, like other states. and so people. 58.1, too. You're, yeah. pu- you're pushing the the envelope. Hey, man. <laughs> Distillation date 08, mm-hmm. about 10 years old, give or take. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a little under 10 years. And a first of our island malt, we have fully matured our Moin and Bordeaux red wine cast for nine full years. Creating a deep red, mm-hmm. golden liquid. Yeah. Balanced with pepper and smoke. And how much pizza in here, you said? 10? Uh, the parts per million beef, uh, when it started off, uh, 40, roughly around the 40. Oh, that's, that's, that's significantly higher. The human palate can usually spot it around eight, eight parts per yeah. million minimum. But I, no added color, non chill filtered, huh? matured, and bottled. I feel like it's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's the thing that you'll see with so typical Buna, uh, Buna having twelve year. I'm cleansing my palate. No, no, you're good. Yeah, I'll, monster. How much are they paying for this? No, I'm <laughs> joking. So, but um, Buna uh, twelve year. Sure. That you would see on the shelf. Well, actually, what you'll see on the shelf now, as far as Buna having, you'll see a Struded Air, which is a no age statement, um, green label, and then you'll see Buna having twelve year, which is a staple. Of ours, which is Ooh. unpeated. Both of those are unpeated. All right. And currently in Houston, we still have, or really still out in the, in the U.S., we still have two peated versions of Buna. And that's the Toytech and the Kobanak. Mm-hmm. Those are the two. But once those are gone, and basically what's on the shelves now, that's it. 
of the two peated expressions, but we're going to replace that with a Toytech Aga. And so that will be hitting the Houston market, actually probably you know, in February. So anytime, really. Um, and that will replace those two peated expressions of Buna. But then when you look at Buna, our core range, the Struded Air, no age statement, 12 year, 18 and 25, unpeated, sherry cast. And it's, yes, it's from Isla, but with the taste profile is going to be similar to a space side still with the Isla influence of the, the sea salt, the seaweed, the, the iodine that kind of wow. comes through. So that is very apparent that it's fully matured in, <laughs> in red wine. It's a little dry right there. <laughs> it, is, it is very, very yeah. dry, very red, yeah. uh, red wine uh, heavy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's uh, the, the real strong mm-hmm. dry taste always reminds me of, and this is not going to make sense to anyone listening, but it makes sense in my head. Um, I used to, my, my, my wife's grandmother is 98 years old, 95, 98, something like there. I mean, really at that point, it doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, there's a dustiness <laughs> when, when we go over to her house. Oh, there. It, it's like we we stayed. Uh, we'll go up and visit her sometimes. Yeah. We'll stay the night upstairs, and she never goes upstairs. She's 98 years yeah, old. There's, right. there's no going upstairs. Yeah. Uh, but there's these old twin beds that, that my wife and her sisters used to sleep on when they were like kids, mm-hmm. right? So we're in our 30s now, right? So that was old, those beds are old, yeah. right? So there's like this dusty, musty, that, yeah. and, and that's what reminds me of. Fully matured in a, yeah. in a positive way. That's not. No, that's no, not I, I guess it's something I'm over here shitting on it, but I no, mean, it's a. Uh, there's a, a a very dry. No, at least you didn't go the uh, the summer Eve route. You know where <laughs> you could have went that way. I had to think of how to really say that. How I want that to come out, but yeah. There's a. Um, <laughs> that is. A nine year, it, and it also older than nine years. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and also another thing I point this out is that you don't know, normally get fully matured red wine casks sure. in Scotch, so this is quite unique in that regards. And again, there's, I think there's only 700 cases of this production, it's not, so it's, it's not limited finished. edition. And I would say it drinks about for the first time today. Mm-hmm. It drinks about the right proof, 58.1. Um, but it does it does taste. Uh, older than what it is mm-hmm. because of that red, fully mature yeah, red, red wines wine tend to mature a lot quicker yeah. than uh, you know, I mean that's a very dark color for you know nine years I uh, hate to dump this so oh, okay. just use the other glass Here I'm going to use the other glass for yeah. the second Buddha yeah so, so this so, is the uh, Palo Cortado okay and so this one is I would say for for the for this time of the year it's our big daddy right now it's um, your big daddy yeah, what's, what's about, big daddy what's the price about 500 bucks <laughs> So yeah, so definitely, it's our you know definitely our step up. But it's your beast. It's not our beast. I mean, that's not but that's it's, not that's not a bet for single malt scotch. Just but, going back to Jay Friedman's comments on, yeah. on a rich man's game, it's it's still up there, but it's not. Yeah. What's the story behind it? Because I'll have I'll have I'll give you a comparison to it. Yeah. So I'm, honestly, though, we say that, but we shipped. Oh, I think I only had twenty cases of this for Texas. Sure. We've we only have left eight cases. So we only have 16 bottles left in the um, Texas. Wow. So, two pack cases. Yeah, two pack cases. So, uh, I mean, 1,600 bottles overall production. Yeah. You know, again, very limited, and it's just a kind of little. Uh, you know, all these are just p- part of the sort of limited editions. W- what's up. the ages? Uh, what, give me that. Uh, this one is 21 years yeah. old, and it's two years in the Palo Cortado uh, sherry cast. It's kind of in somewhere between a fino and a oloroso. It's sort of uh, a medium. Uh, sherry and such and so you get some hints of like toffee in that but also some more of the sort of fruitier notes of of fino Uh, so it's kind of a a in between the two so I'm going to do a little constructive criticism to a different brand okay I I realize that that is you do not endorse or or say anything that you agree with anything I'm saying but um, I I think that uh, Whistlepig Boss Hog is an incredible whiskey yep I think it tastes fan fantastic there's no complaints but it's also 500 bucks yeah yeah and it's 14 years give or yeah. take so you're talking about a 21 year old palo cortado cask finish that's got a limited production of less than 2000 bottles mm-hmm. worldwide yeah. at yeah. 54.9% yeah and then again i've talked about how brands make their money working backwards if the retailer takes 25 to 30% and if mm-hmm. the distributor takes 25 to 30% not including 
if a, if a separate importer is also involved, then you're you're they're, they're, you're not making a ton of money yeah. off this incredible release. And uh, no. well, I don't know if it's incredible yet. I'm gonna taste no, it. No, no, definitely. Right I mean, it's it's, uh, yeah. it's done well. Oh, there's a butterscotch note to that, and it comes with that cool box. So this is the cool box that it comes with too. <laughs> inside so. the cool yeah. box, inside the for cool hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. There's a butterscotch note to this, like a. Like yeah, a toffee. I sure I'm not yeah, I got some. Uh, can, yeah, some toffee or caramel. Don't candles, tell me so. yet. Don't tell I'm me not, yet. I'm Don't not, tell me I'm yet. Not, I'm so I'm getting, I'm getting some toffee. I'm getting some. Uh, Maybe some uh, dry fruits as well. Uh, don't influence me. Don't cheat. Uh, the palate has gone. <laughs> dried. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely getting dried fruits. It reminds me of like a uh, you know. Um, so there's this great bar that that I always encourage. Reserve 101. Nope. I encourage. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage. Uh, I always encourage brands to go visit. And the bar's called Rosewater in Clear Lake. Pasha does That's a lot I'm, of. He does. We a were lot down of, there. Yeah, yeah. He but does a, a lot of. If you were down there, you should have called me. That's where I live, man. Well, we I, well, we could have had drinks. I could have got you to. We, this guy I, has a potty mouth like crazy. Dude, you I, don't well, get to see it on camera. Well, uh, I, I, well, I took him down to. Uh, now that we know where you live, we might yeah. invite you. I took him yeah. down to Galveston for a little bit. Sure. Yeah, just you know, so you could see the. Yeah, so you could see the dirty water. Yeah. Um, no, so Rosewater recycles all their their leftover fruits, and they this has a dried citrus note to it. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you take a slice of orange and dry it out, um, this has got that dried almost like a French. Man. Something in this. It smells fantastic. I'll be honest yeah, with I you. I got a lot of dry fruit. This is the first time I've tasted this. Like, it's out like of the smokiness bottle. as well. I get to. Very slight. Mm -hmm. Out of the bottle and with. You know. Is there peat in this? No, no, no. I don't get any uh, peat. There's not meant to be any peat, but uh, there is a slight smoky tint to it. You do get a little. Uh, just. I, I would argue it's probably the wine. I would, mm -hmm. I would say you probably hit. If you're looking at phenol level, and I, I hadn't looked at the spec sheet on this, probably maybe, maybe a 10. Maybe a Maybe. less, less just than enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah There's just like I, I did find yeah. a slight smoky hint when I actually tasted it with in a fresh glass. So the master blender of all these that we tasted is a lady named Christy McCallan. Oh yeah, that's what's even more interesting Funny about, about it. So yeah. there's another McCallan drop for you. Listen, I, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. The show, uh, the only way this show stays afloat is no, definitely. It, it, it costs money. That's, and, I want to talk to you about that. And, and brands, brands yeah. help sponsor the show, but I don't have brands on. That I won't. There's been a couple of uh, brands out of Austin that I've uh, denied sponsorship for mm -hmm. because I, I, I think their product's bad. And I well, think you got to have I, a certain integrity too for your shows. So. It's not it's not yeah. to sling mud or to be mean yeah. to them, but it's like if if I don't if I know that it's not a respectable company, then it, it's gonna it's it's gonna only well, prevent thing, the show from from growing. One and, thing and, they always tell you: if you're going in business, go into business that's something that you're passionate about, right? I can so, tell you right now, if, I'm passionate about it, but yeah, I don't yeah. know about making money but, on this show for, but no, yet. No, no, I'm working no. on it. But I'm saying, <laughs> but if you're going to partner with people, you want to be passionate about them well, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's something that you're drinking, especially whiskey, and tea, I mean, hey, it's a drinking show. So if it's something you can't sit here and palate. Yourself, I don't think. <laughs> I, I am working very hard to get a few comedian, like celebrities, in here yeah. that I know drink. Yeah, I think it would be an incredibly different show just to sit down oh. and and do, and Jack. Yeah. As a note to you, you need me get Kevin Hart here. Fat, yeah, <laughs> fast cuts. Like like a, it doesn't have to be the full. We can sit down for an hour and talk, but mm -hmm. fast cuts between talking and segments, I think would would be get a few get a few drinks in them before oh, we yeah. start filming and just kind of. I think it would be. Uh, I'm working on it. I had a, I had a call today from that guy I mentioned. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few. There's been a few big comedians that, that know Kevin Hart. Hey, I'm it's just not saying. Kevin Hart, no. but um, <laughs> anyways, no, we, good, but. we we've we've gone through all four segments. Yep. Uh, I I am I can't tell you how uh, thankful I am. You guys came. No, thank you, man. Every part of this was a, a big nerd out for me. So I I, I really am happy. No, that you definitely. Guys up. I feel bad that you know I didn't get to do anything with the big group. But uh, we'll make it up, obviously, at the the social. Uh, <coughs> we'll make it at the social, and yeah. and I can do something whenever. So, yeah, no, uh, no we, We've got a few yeah. f federal, uh, federal yeah, grill. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big federal supporter. Yep. Boss Cat, big, yep. fe big supporter yep. of Boss Cat. Um, if you want to do something with an account ever, yep. let me know. Definitely. We promote it. Our email list, people like to give me a hard time and say I get a lot of our followers from the group. But um, our, our email list has been over 5,000 people for the past – Three years, got gotcha, you. Okay, uh, which has and if, as you know, yep. HBS just hit five thousand. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's been happening a lot longer than that. But uh, if you 
are doing something at any accounts, yeah. you guys have my support 100%. Just let yeah. me know. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything. We've just sent it out to our No, group. definitely. I mean, the biggest thing for me last, I would say, year or half a year or whatever, I've I oversee 18 states. So we're, Do you really? Yeah. So all the way from here. You answer to, the phone and text messages more than I, I other people to. I know that I, that operate, that handle multiple states. I know if, if I don't do it then, because wife, kids, sure. family, you know, um, all that comes first. So I just try to take care of business as it comes. Uh, sometimes that gets me in trouble. But uh, I know sometimes if I don't do it then. I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah. It's yeah. like, got to do it or I, I forget about it. I so. worked a night shift. Slept for five hours, woke up, yeah. and the entire hour that I was awake to spend time with the family, it was answering emails yeah. and messages. and That's what it is. So, I mean, but other than that, <laughs> now we're re doing some stuff, and I'll have a lot more time sure. to spend in Texas. Sure. And it'll be, I guess, right now kind of like But you're Texas based and, here, right? Yeah. yeah, just Texas and Florida. Um, but with that, it's going to give me more time to really... You know. Well, th- thank you very much for having me on the show, and uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, it, it was great. Thanks, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, we 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 killed it. I'm excited. I'm uh, got this craving for Pete right now that I'm just I'm loving so much. <laughs> so go back to it. Yeah. Um, we'll have another drink, but we got to let you guys yeah. go. Cheers. Adios.